What's up guys, it's Dalmatter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another History Matters video. So this one we've got, why are so many royal f European royal families German? Uh, and I think this is going to be a combination of two answers. One, after the Roman Empire fell, Germanic, Germanic warriors took over what most of Western Europe, uh, and North Africa actually as well, but they ended up getting moved, uh, kicked out of there when the uh, Muslim invasions happened. Uh, so even a lot of the non- non-German royal families are German uh, or Germanic in origin uh, and then two the HRE had so many little kingdoms and dukedoms and duchies and all of this stuff everyone was trying to be involved in the politics of the HRE uh, so they were marrying into those families right because you wanted more land uh, and influence in the HRE so anyway link to the original video down below let's jump into it in 1914 all of these countries <laughs> in Europe were ruled by monarchs and these were ruled by monarchs of a German royal family, quite a lot. And given that some of these rulers could trace their houses back a thousand years and others mere decades, why were so many of them German? So a lot of this can be explained by one thing, the late unification of Germany. At the turn of the no. 18th century, the German speaking parts of Europe weren't unified like the French, English or Spanish speaking parts. It was divided into numerous smaller states, many of which had their own monarchies. And, and this, is, oh man, like the HRE, this is when it was finally starting to like unify together. The thing is, like if, if you go back like way back, there's so many little dukedoms and duchies and uh, you know kingdoms and this and that and the other thing and you know, and so many of them would would obviously marry into each other and marry into other countries and then you know you get this little piece of land here and this little piece and uh, they're just everywhere. And these monarchs would marry off their kids to whoever would have them. A Prussian Off princess married the Prince of Orange, a Brunswicker duchess married the King of Denmark, a Badener duchess married the King of Sweden, and one from Mecklenburg married the King of the United Kingdom. Given that all of these monarchies only really paid lip service to their overlords, the Holy Roman Emperors, there wasn't much risk in marrying them. Whereas marrying someone in the French royal family could cause issues with inheritance, which France, unlike the small German states, could press. And, over time, childless or female heirs would mean a near relative would succeed the throne, and they would be a member of their father's often German house. But what about countries individually? Well, the United Kingdom's monarchy had previously been Anglo-Saxon, French, Welsh, and Scottish. After well, And the thing, even the French one, right, they were, they were Norman. They, they were Norman French, which means they were Norsemen. Right? They, were, they were still Germanic. And that's the thing with like a lot of the, the, the non-German ones, right? They're technically not German in like the sense of just German. Um, like we think of it today, but they were Germanic. Uh, you know, what, when the Roman Empire fell and the Germanic tribes came in, they became the established ruling class, which eventually became the royal families in a lot of these areas. So even though they might have, they might not be, uh, you know, German by today's standards, they were definitely Germanic, right? Certain names, for example, from Spain, like Rodriguez. Uh, I believe Rodriguez is of uh, Germanic origin. Uh, I'll double check that. Rodriguez last name origin uh yeah see rodriguez is a spanish patronym of germanic origin right so a lot of these royal families even the ones that weren't german were still germanic from the, from the germanic tribes that took over europe to flirt with catholicism english nobles called upon william of orange to seize the throne from james ii he did and catholics were then banned from becoming ruler william <laughs> also didn't have any children and so the throne went to his sister-in-law anne she continued the streak of not having an heir and died childless, and so the throne passed to her cousin's son, George of Hanover, her closest Protestant relative, thereby beginning the Hanoverian dynasty, which would be succeeded by the saxe coburg and Gotha dynasty, which would soon after change its name to Windsor when all things German suddenly became less popular. <laughs> In Denmark, throughout most of its history, its monarchy was an elective one. But when King Christopher III made the mistake of dying without an heir, the nobles had to pick somebody new. As such, they chose Christian, who was the son of the Duke of Schleswig, a region with a sizable German-speaking minority which Denmark had a close relationship with and one it wanted to keep. This began the House of Oldenburg, which still reigns to this day and also in Norway, although Norway chose a Danish prince for their throne when it split from Sweden in 1905. The German and Austrian imperial families both have their origins in the Holy Roman Empire, the Hohenzollerns were from Zollern here, and the Habsburgs were unsurprisingly from Habsburg here in what's now Switzerland. Both slowly over the centuries increased their holdings and titles from counts to dukes to archdukes and kings before emperors. There wasn't a lot of opportunity for outside royal houses to advance in the Holy Roman Empire, and so these families just stayed German. The last major power which had a German royal family was Russia. Peter the Great was a Romanov, as was his daughter Empress Elizabeth I. 
She died childless and the throne passed to her nephew Peter III. Peter's father was the Duke of Holstein and thus he was a part of that house. Now, Peter and his wife Catherine kept the name Romanov to tie themselves to their empire and its people, <laughs> and that Russian. royal family stayed in power until, you know, a thing happened. So what about all of these smaller nations? Well, these nations all came into existence in the 19th century with the oversight of the great powers, who, as a result, got to choose who would be king. The first was Greece. Britain, France and Russia all had a stake in the new country, and thus they all wanted an ally on the throne. As such, after their first choice said no, they picked Prince Otto of Bavaria, who wasn't aligned with any of them. Next was Belgium, which, as a buffer state between Prussia and France, couldn't be aligned with either. As such, the British chose Leopold of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha, husband of the king's niece, to keep the two close to ensure Belgium's independence. Romania France had a German forever. monarch after its first ruler, a native Romanian became somewhat despotic and was overthrown in a coup. The new country had only recently broken away from the Ottoman Empire. And so, to maintain its independence, its nobles picked a prince from the Prussian Hohenzollern royal family. This essentially guaranteed their independence from Russia, the Ottomans and the Austrians next door. And for Bulgaria, the reasons were similar. At first, it was ruled by the nephew of the Russian Emperor, but he got himself overthrown after being terrible. He was replaced by an Austrian-backed candidate which, unlike Romania, was fine because Austria-Hungary wasn't on the border with them. And after this, these royal families remained in place until either today or their eventual ousting in the 20th century. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizonette, Kelly Moneymaker, Sky Chappelle. Yeah, I, I, I guess in this video, they're specifically talking about Germany uh, and not Germanic. Because, because again, like the, uh, uh, the, the, the royal families of pretty much every Western European country are Germanic, and that, that comes from the fall of Rome, right? Uh, even like uh, you know the the French r rule that uh, uh, that Britain had right the the Norman rule is the Norman Norsemen right Every, everyone knows that they're actually Scandinavian it's pretty common knowledge um, but yeah like the the the, the Spanish throne the the all these other thrones were all actually run by not German but Germanic right because this is technically before German became like a, a thing right it was pre-German, proto-German, right? Uh, but anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.